two years ago in December 2018, I received an email from Tesla and they asked me if I want to change my not binding reservation into a firm order for my Model 3 performance, which I reserved before. And I absolutely did that and I didn't regret it for a second. So it was a great decision in my life. But at that point in time, I asked myself, you know, if Tesla would not have the supercharger network, would I still, you know, do this so easily? And my answer was a little bit hesitant. And the reason is, I'm obviously German. You can hear this from my accent. And here in Germany, which is for most Americans a little bit odd, about 50% of all people are living for rent. I mean, they, they rent an apartment, they rent a house, and the other 50% they own. And if you just rent something, it's not that easy to charge. So in the past, it wasn't even possible if you lived in an apartment to install a charger in the garage. This changed lately. But what I'm trying to say is it's still a challenge for most Germans, most Europeans, um, if you live in a city, to find charging abilities nearby. So in most cases, you, you just can't charge overnight at home. So therefore, you need to find ways to manage that. So the supercharger network has been a competitive edge for Tesla for a long time. That is no news. We all know how, you know, incredible it is. It, it works seamlessly. You never have problems. I never had problems and um, they are expanding quite rapidly. Nowadays, we have the V3 superchargers rolling out around the globe, which I had the pleasure also to use already. And I can say it's really going very fast. So it's, it's definitely an improvement. So again, no news. So why I'm recording this video? Well, you know, I figured out that here in Munich, the city I'm living in, there is a V3 supercharger now in the city. I wouldn't say in the city center, but it's pretty close to the city center. And I found it interesting because it's not nearby a real autobahn where, or highway, where you normally would expect them. And the same happened with the first V3 supercharger in Germany which is in the city of Berlin. So we have now two cities here in Germany where all of a sudden a V3 supercharger is showing up. And we all know it's 250 kilowatts, which is quite amazing because the fastest public supercharger or the fastest public chargers you find in cities here in my country are around 50 kilowatts. So yes, you have fast charging abilities outside on autobahns and crosses and you know, um, areas where a lot of traf traffic is passing by, but you don't have this in the city. And I'm asking myself, is Tesla, you know, changing the game again here? Is fast charging in the city now a new competitive edge for Tesla owners compared to all other brands, which regardless how good and fast charging their BEVs are, doesn't provide any ability to charge your car in terms of a network. You can buy wall boxes and install it at home in your garage, but I said it before, this applies only to about 50% of people and even less because a lot of owners are living in cities and they own an apartment, but they don't have the ability to install a wall box somewhere. The V3 supercharger I refer to here in Munich passing is the one that you see in this video. So we talk about 12 stalls here and this is a huge mall where they install them on the third parking deck. And there's a lot of traffic usually these days because of COVID and because Germany is in a lockdown. There is not a lot of people passing by and they are not even open. As you can see from the sleeves, um, the V3 supercharger is about to open soon, but not really yet. 
The location of the new V3 supercharger is definitely in the city of Munich. It's not in the suburbs, it's not at an autobahn cross or any place where you would expect a long distance travel fast charging network. It's not in the city center, yes that's true, but it's a part of Munich and that's pretty surprising. You see here the the mall where you know the supercharger is located in the garage and it's a pretty huge mall so definitely intended for people who are going shopping which means that you know if you go 15 30 minutes shopping your car will be filled and charged which is amazing and on top of that it needs to be said that most you know public chargers in munich and not only in munich all over germany are pretty expensive compared with tesla so not only that it's faster, it's even cheaper. The second V3 supercharger that is still in construction nearby Munich or in the suburbs of Munich is very close to where people are living. So this is not an Autobahn cross really, it's near an Autobahn, no doubt. But it also shows once again that Tesla is providing more V3 250 kilowatt fast charging opportunities for people who are living really in cities. When the first V3 supercharger in a city was located in Berlin, I was telling myself, well, you know, Giga Berlin is nearby, so that makes a lot of sense. They can show this to politicians and to people from the media. But um, now I believe after I've seen the same in Munich and after a couple of other cities seem to have similar developments, the Tesla is definitely upping the game here. They are creating a new competitive edge. If you are living in a city, and again, 50% of people are living in apartments, they don't own uh, you know, property, they are, don't have the ability necessarily to install charging abilities and to charge overnight. They need to have fast charging abilities in the city. And the public infrastructure we have right now is simply not sufficient. And I believe Germany is not alone with that challenge. This is at least in Europe, everywhere more or less the same, depending where you're living. But with Tesla now upping the game, the German automakers are going to have another challenge. And the challenge is, if you have a Tesla, you can go shopping in a mall, you have 500 kilometers, maybe long range in your car, and after you are, you know, shopping 15, 20 minutes, your car is gonna be filled again. And this is something only Tesla is able to provide today. If you watched this video, you may have realized there hasn't been any ads in between. And this is no coincidence or accident. This is by purpose. I decided not to do any ads anymore in my videos because I find them pretty disturbing and annoying. Actually, I don't like to see videos where ads are. I'm watching a lot of videos and you know, you have always this click to jump over. This is something I'm not doing anymore. So this is probably hopefully more convenient for you for all the videos that will follow from today. Without having ads, I don't have any income from Google anymore. So if you want to compensate for that, you're very welcome as a patron. On top of that, I can recommend to watch from time to time what I'm posting on Twitter, uh, what I'm writing on Clean Technica or Electro Auto News. And if you want to support my mission, you are welcome as a patron anyway. Have a great time and see you soon.